One of the most talked about bits from this past week's presidential debate between Kamala Harris and Donald Trump, perhaps the most talked about bit that didn't involve Trump shouting about Haitian immigrants eating people's pet dogs and cats. By the way, that has resulted in bomb threats being made in Springfield, Ohio, that have necessitated the closing of several public buildings, including elementary schools. Nice job, you brick-brained freaks. Anyway, one of the most talked about bits from the debate, other than the they're eating the dogs bit, was this exchange between Trump and debate moderator Lindsey Davis about his long in the works health care plan. You now say you're going to keep Obamacare, quote, unless we can do something much better. Last month, you said, quote, we're working on it. So tonight, nine years after you first started running, do you have a plan and can you tell us what it is? Obamacare was lousy health care. Always was. It's not very good today. And what I said, that if we come up with something and we are working on things, we're going to do it and we're going to replace it. And what we will do is we're looking at different plans. If we can come up with a plan that's going to cost our people, our population, less money and be better health care than Obamacare, then I would absolutely do it. But until then, I'd run it as good as it can be run. So just a yes or no, you still do not have a plan. I have concepts of a plan. I'm not president right now. I know this topic has been done to death, but I wanted to use it as a branching off point to something a bit broader. As Lindsey Davis points out in that clip, it's been nine years that Donald Trump has been promising this amazing, incredible health care plan that's going to replace the Affordable Care Act, and it's going to be better than anything anybody's ever seen, right? And when he was president, it was always two weeks away. In two weeks, we'll be announcing our new health care plan, and it's going to replace Obamacare, and everybody's going to love it. It's going to be just phenomenal. And it was always two weeks away, and it never happened. And here we are in 2024, and it still hasn't happened. It doesn't look like it's going to happen. And Trump can't even say he has a plan in the debate. He can't even say, well, no, we actually do have a plan and we'll be announcing it. Now he's to the point where he's not even pretending there's a plan. He's saying, oh, yeah, I have, I, have, uh, I have concepts of a plan. I got some general idea of a plan, possibly, theoretically, hypothetically, in some possible reality at some point in the vast infinitude of the multiverse. I think there might be a healthcare plan in there somewhere that I could use. That's the point that this has degraded to. And to me, this is an example of what I believe to be one of the core principles of conservatism, particularly modern American Donald Trump-tinged conservatism, and that is laziness. These people, Donald Trump, his defenders, his supporters, the people that are lifting him up and propping him up, they are just deeply lazy people. I'm speaking primarily here of intellectual laziness. I know that there are many, many millions of people in the general population of the country who identify as conservative or lean conservative or lean very far to the right in terms of their personal politics, who are very hard workers in a physical sense. They do a lot of hard, demanding labor in their jobs to earn a living and are probably paid far less <laughs> than they should be for the labor that they do. And that labor that they do, that physical labor, that working class labor is not respected at all by the political class of conservatives, by right-wing politicians and commentators, etc. But it does take place and it is certainly worth something. So I'm not talking about physical laziness necessarily. I'm talking mostly about philosophical laziness, intellectual laziness, the unwillingness to do the work necessary to be the kind of people that right-wingers claim that they are. Donald Trump and people like him and the people that support him, the Fox News hosts, the Sean Hannity's, the Jesse Waters, etc., they want to be seen as a particular kind of people. They want to command a certain authority a certain intellectual and moral authority. But they have proven time and time again that they are not willing to do the work to actually become those kinds of people. And now it's gotten to the point where they're not even willing to do the work to pretend that they are, that they are those kinds of people. Donald Trump is so lazy and has become so much lazier 
throughout his political career these past nine or ten years or so that now he is not even willing to put on the act. And he never put on that great of an act anyway. But recall, he used to at least claim that he had a health care plan coming. Now he's not even doing that. Just try to fathom how lazy that is. And it, it, it comes through in other aspects of his political persona on his stump speech. How many times, if, if you watch a Trump rally or you probably can't stand to watch the entire thing, you probably don't have the stamina to sit through an entire 90-minute or two-hour Trump uh, stump speech, which is the length that they tend to run at this point. But if you if you watch one of those or you read a transcript or you just watch clips from it, you'll notice in between the runaway egomania and the endless relitigating of past grievances and the lies and the xenophobia and the, the boasting and the dehumanization of uh, marginalized people and the vilification of his political opponents in amongst all of that, usually you will see Trump make his pitch for him as the candidate to the people. And it usually amounts to him saying, look, you have to vote for me. Like, he's not even going to try to sell them anything anymore. He's not even going to try to say, you should vote for me because I'm going to implement this policy and this policy, and I'm going to make your life better in this way and this way and this way, and we're going to do this and we're going to do that. And hey, hey, here is the health care plan. Here are the bullet points of the health care plan. And here's what we're going to do differently than Obamacare. And it's going to be great. And this is why you should vote for me. He just says, look, you have to vote for me. You have to vote for me. It doesn't even matter if you like me. You have to vote for me. Just vote for me. Why do I even have to ask? I shouldn't even have to ask. God, it's so exhausting to have to ask people to vote for me. Just vote for me. Just vote for me. And yes, that's entitlement. And yes, that's narcissism, for sure. But it's also laziness. It's not just, I don't want to work for this. It's not just, I'm unwilling to work for this. It's, I shouldn't have to work for this. This is my right. The presidency should be mine because I have declared that I want it, and you should give it to me. The idea that you even think I should have to earn it in some way is appalling and offensive. He probably doesn't think this on any sort of conscious level, but I think that's the point that he's proceeding from. And yeah, again, it's not just laziness, it's narcissism and entitlement, but a lot of it boils down to he just doesn't want to do the work. He's just lazy. When he won the election, one of the big stories in the immediate aftermath of 2016 and him winning the election was how unprepared his transition team was. They had no idea what they needed to do, who they needed to hire, what they needed to have in place on day one for his presidency to even begin. They hadn't done any of the groundwork necessary on a fundamental level to get ready to be the president because they're lazy people. I have a very good friend. A lot of you may know her if you watch my uh, Wednesday night live stream, Trek Reluctantly, where we do a live watch along of either an episode of Star Trek Deep Space Nine or an episode of Agatha Christie's Poirot starring David Suchet as Poirot. And we alternate one week we'll do Poirot and one week we'll do Deep Space Nine. And uh, her name is Dana, Dana Cole. And she and I have known each other for a very long time. We're really close friends. She's one of my closest friends in the world. And in addition to being on Trek Reluctantly with me and also being uh, a cast member on The Ensign's Log, the podcast that I that I am on along with the brilliant Jason Harding, um, She's a public school teacher. That's her actual, that's her day job. That's her shoot job, as the wrestler might say. And one of the things that Dana says to her students, and one of the ideas that she has is this different, different concept, different way of looking at laziness. Dana likes to say there's no such thing as laziness. It's just different priorities. So if you look at someone and you say, oh, look at them, look at they're they're so lazy. It's not that they're lazy. It's that they have different priorities for their life than you think they should have or that society thinks they should have. Now, I don't necessarily agree with that. I don't necessarily think that is always the best or fairest way to conceive of laziness. But if you do look at it that way, I think it applies very well to Donald Trump and to the Trump style of right-wing conservatism that we have with us presently here in the United States, because 
you can look at it as, well, Donald Trump isn't trying to sell himself to the American people. Donald Trump isn't putting in the work to draft specific plans or to have a health care proposal that he could show to people and say, I'll replace Obamacare with this, because he doesn't see that as a priority. The specifics, the actual work that would go into governing and actually implementing these in most cases, absolutely horrific, reckless, destructive to democracy and the social order plans that he has for his presidency, that actual work doesn't interest him. He doesn't care. That's not his priority. And that tells you something incredibly important about Donald Trump and his ilk, his specific brand of, of conservatism. Usually, I consider it a waste of time to try and reach out from the left to voters on the right. I can I, I don't usually address myself to Republicans or right-leaning or conservative voters and, and try to talk them into not voting for the Republican and to vote for the Democrat, because I, I think that's a waste of time. And, and quite frankly, I don't think we need it. I think if we here on the left spent more time energizing people on the left who don't vote for us for whatever reason and convincing them that they should get off their asses and go to the polls and vote for us, we wouldn't need to try and flip Republicans. And I think that's a much more fruitful effort and a much more worthwhile effort. But just for the sake of this topic, let me talk to any possible Republicans who might be seeing this. If you have somehow wandered in, if you're lost and you don't know where you are, and you find yourself watching one of my videos, and you are a Republican or a conservative or someone who is undecided between Donald Trump and Kamala Harris, but maybe you're kind of leaning toward Trump, but you're not too sure, consider this. Donald Trump has frequently compared himself to Ronald Reagan. He compares himself and parallels himself with Reagan in many different areas, in his economic philosophy, if you can call it a philosophy, in his views on abortion, he often says, and even said during the debate, he has he believes in the same exceptions to abortion that Ronald Reagan did. Ronald Reagan was not good for you. If you are a working class person, if you are a middle class person, if you are a person who lives below the poverty line, regardless of your political persuasion, Ronald Reagan was not good for you, and Ronald Reagan did not care about you. But Ronald Reagan at least cared enough whether you think he cared about you enough, or he cared about his job enough, or he cared about getting reelected enough, whatever he cared about, he cared enough about something to at least pretend that he gave a shit about you and that he was trying to be a president. I think it was mostly pretending in Reagan's case, <laughs> but at least Ronald Reagan was willing to put forth that much effort. He was willing to do that much work. And Ronald Reagan was willing to craft and deliver this fictional, but nonetheless compelling vision of America that allowed a lot of you conservatives to take heart in it and to invest in it and to internalize it. And a lot of people who voted for Reagan back in the day and a lot of people Today, who did vote for Reagan, who still remember him fondly, they, they talk about that. They talk about, Reagan made me feel good to be an American. Ronald Reagan was at least willing to go to those lengths, was at least willing to do that work. Now, I personally don't think it was good work. I don't think it was work that led us anywhere good as a country. But he was at least willing to do it. He was at least willing to fake it. Donald Trump is so lazy and so careless and cares so little and thinks so little about you, the people that he wants to vote for him, that he's not even bothering to fake it. Is Dana right? Is laziness just a different set of priorities? If she is, then one thing is certain, my hypothetical conservative video watcher, Whatever Trump's priorities are, they don't include you.